and welcome back to Eerie's Witchcraft and Witchy Wisdom Wednesdays. A wonderful collaboration I am doing. Seven witches, seven different takes. I will have all the other ladies' channels in the description that is working on this collaboration. Make sure you definitely check them out so you can just have multiple sources of information on these topics. This week we are talking about sacred spaces and I am just going to give you a few examples of them and what they're used for and this is coming from my path, my practice and we'll discuss a couple others. So the first one I want to talk about is your astral temple. Sacred space or astral temple for the sorcerer takes place in a realm of our imagination in the astral realm and then we bring it to life through the material realm or in our homes a personal space the astral temple is a big core practice of a practitioner's work now i'm speaking it is more uh, common for people of the left hand path practice or magician or other practices to use this method, but I say it's good for everybody if you want to try it, if you want to use it. Um, it's just more common uh, with those paths. So <clears throat> it is akin to any other witch or sorcerer's altar, home space, or sacred ritualistic space. The goal here is to create an ever-present ritual space allowing the sorcerer to perform ritual or other ceremonies without tools or I should say without physical tools. <laughs> this should begin to construct in the sorcerer's imagination and visualization along with intent and strong will and built during meditating or astral dream work. Physical rituals are always important but effective results come from within our core. Now a bit about what I call the spiritual compass um, and this is more you'll see in traditional witchcraft uh, paths. Um, some branches of Wicca use it and Native Americans specifically used this. So traditionally it is believed that the whole earth is sacred and you sit in the middle of seven directions at all times. These seven directions make up your spiritual compass. So it gives us the ability to create a smaller sacred area to practice at, like away from home, or even in your home, this could be applied to north, south, east and west, above, below, and the center, which is us. So we have continuous contact of energy within all that is around us. Basically, you are following and using this method to find a space, usually away from your home, like in nature or the woods. And you focus on the space you choose and marking it sacred to your work or to return to the location later. A sacred space that focuses on the surrounding area, objects, energy, and forms. One would then create the area and call on all seven directions. This provides the means and access between the material world <clears throat> excuse me, and the divine. And I wanted to throw a few alternative sacred spaces in here. So... A lot of people use altars, travel altars, uh, your workspace, personally in your home. Anywhere that you have a temple, statue, or something dedicated or constructed for a magical purpose or a ritual. Um, or a space dedicated to transform spiritually. We have to keep in mind a lot of meanings and definitions. So sacred means to make holy. Holy is dedicated or consecrated to a deity, person, or especially dear 
to one individual or many. So we have multiple levels of sacred spaces that we work with and dedicate and use in our practices and all of our paths. If you're pagan or a witch, sorcerer, whatever, we use these spaces in some way or another. Meditation, spiritual connection, deities, spell work areas, rituals, nature or outside areas, ancestor work, and astral temple work. It sounds overwhelming, so if you are a beginner, I would just start with what you would consider sacred to you. Uh, that could be a deity, ancestors, yourself, or just uh, focusing within to create a space for you to work in. Um, kind of uh, explore what it means to you, what you deem sacred. Then I'd suggest finding the area within your home. Start with your home um, that you can go to and create your sacred space. This will be where you will do most of your magical work, um, rituals, ceremonial magic, or even be alone or to meditate. Consecrate or dedicate that area once you have selected it. Then you can work on your altar and spell casting or ritual space. Decorating according to what you're going to use this for, what you're creating it for. And then you're ready to do your first ritual. Um, and that could be, you know, you don't necessarily have to set up a ceremonial ritual for this unless you want to when you do your dedication or consecration. Um, but you can just have a routine of going in and cleansing it. You can have a routine of something you set up on it every morning or a ritual um, of something in that sense that means something to you. So, you know, that's kind of incorporating it into our daily lives and making it more sacred and powerful to you. So that was my take on sacred spaces. Um, I've talked a little bit about this, actually quite a lot about this topic before. Um, if you're interested in those, I could link them as well. But uh, thank you for coming to see us again. And I will see you next Wednesday for Witchy Wisdom Wednesdays.